of Jefferson Parish. And it is my true honor to be standing here with what is our New Orleans Metropolitan Region leadership. We have with us New Orleans Mayor Latoya Cantrell, St. Bernard Parish President Guy McInnes, Plaquemines Parish President Kirk Lapine, St. Charles Parish President Matthew Jewell, St. John Parish President Jacqueline Hotard, and Tangipahoa Parish President Robbie Miller. And all of them will be addressing you um, as well. Um, earlier today, our Governor John Bell Edwards issued a proclamation, um, a stay at home order, and essentially um, bringing forth essential business reasons to be out and those employees. And we stand here to support that effort. Um, the great thing about Louisiana, and it, we are unique in this country, is that every parish has unique offerings. And that's why we travel so much across the region together because all of our parishes are so uniquely different and that is just so wonderful. But we also have so much in common and we certainly have the love for our great state of Louisiana. We have the love for our people. And in the past couple weeks, we share the fight, the fight against COVID-19 and the coronavirus in our community. The governor has indicated in his speech today that Louisiana has the third highest rate per capita of this virus, um, and that is very important information for everyone to understand. Our region, our region, and, and the leadership you see here represents 85% of Louisiana cases. Our region represents 90% of the deaths in the state of Louisiana. So what you see is across the board collaboration. That is what you are seeing with your elected leaderships. That is what you're seeing with the school systems, with our nonprofits, with our large industry, small businesses across the board. And I know my fellow parish presidents and mayor have spent more time doing that than probably ever before across the board collaborations. So I know I share, and I'm gonna let uh, Mayor Cantrell come up next. Um, we understand that um, we are so very busy and we also understand where the fight is with our medical care workers. And we just wanna thank them. And I know that's shared amongst all of them that has been said time and time again. So with that, I want to introduce New Orleans Mayor Latoya Cantrell. Good evening and thank you all for being here. And more importantly, I want to just uh, thank the presence of our leadership across our region. Uh, and Madam President, it's, it's good to be not only with you, but each and every one of my brothers and sisters. It's just, just an honor. And thank you so much, uh, President Guy McGinnis, who I got that text message early this morning, wanted to organize. I said, let's do it. And everyone else said the same, which is why we are here uh, this evening. Uh, regional collaboration is a top priority, and that's what we're demonstrating right now. Uh, as mentioned, Governor John Bell Edwards, of course, did a statewide stay at home order. Uh, this is in line with the steps that uh, we took in the city of New Orleans on Friday. And the message, we're here to make very clear to the public, stay home. Testing has ramped up, and as we have been saying, once tests have ramped up, which they are, we will see the results, and we will also see the impact growing significantly. This is what we have been expecting, and it's a good thing because we, one, have to understand where we are in terms of the bell to even understand how we can flatten that curve. Right now, we don't know where the curve is, which means that we're pleading to our public, to our residents, to stay at home. We opened up two drive-through testing sites in Orleans Parish. We're here right now in Jefferson Parish where they opened up on yesterday. We have just seen the response from our community. It's been phenomenal. Today, we were able to open it up to residents throughout the city of New Orleans for testing, as well as we stood up, of course, testing sites that are available to those who can walk in throughout the parish, over 31 of them. Today, we open testing again to individuals 18 years or older who have symptoms. Today, we completed our daily max at 250 per test site. So a total of 500 tests were completed by 3 p.m. The, the uh, drive-through testing sites will open up tomorrow at 8 a.m. 
and will be open until 6 p.m. or until we have maximized our reach. We are constant in terms of contact with our federal delegation and advocating for our needs. Over 250 billion in flexible emergency fiscal assistance to be allocated directly to cities who are in need and we collectively are those cities in need. This will empower the nation's mayors and our parish presidents to immediately take the bold actions necessary to protect our people, our public, from both the pandemic as well as the subsequent economic fallout. This also speaks to the needs of our healthcare professionals who are on the front lines daily, and I cannot overstate enough how they have been unwavering in their efforts every single day, 24 hours, meeting the demands of our public. But they need more support. And so the president to declare COVID-19 a major disaster, to unlock several FEMA programs like individual assistance programs is something that we need. We also understand that our partner, the Second Harvest Food Bank, they're running out of food and we need them to be able to access the USDA, the federal assistance programs for feeding immediately. We need to reduce the city's cost share for FEMA as, rela as it relates to public assistance programs. These are something, these are things that we need immediately and we're asking and we're advocating on behalf of all of our residents as it relates to advocating to our federal delegation and of course, the President of the United States. We need people to listen, all of our people to listen to our safety leaders to our healthcare professionals to stay at home, practice social distancing, essential services only, food, pharmacies, banks. Your healthcare providers are at work to protect you and let's do all that we can to ensure that they can protect us. But they cannot protect us from ourselves if we're not following the rules. So we are all in this together and right now, the way that we can come together for our people is for us to collectively stay at home. With that, I'm going to ask our parish president, Guy McGinnis from St. Bernard to come up at this time. And thank you again for being here and covering what we have to say collectively. Thank you, Mayor. And thank you for being one of the first responses today. And we know you have a lot going on. So thank you for your leadership and being here today. And Madam, President Chang, thank you for inviting us all here. This is such an important um, gathering, so th thank you and your staff. You know, uh, for the residents of St. Bernard Parish, we want you to continue to monitor sbpg.net. We do on twice daily updates on Facebook, and we want you to do that. But today is, we're here to show a united front, to support our governor, to support our president in this order. We can't do this if people, the mayor said it, the president said it, listen and stay home. We don't have time. We're sitting here today, this is so important. We don't have time to mess around with foolishness and splitting hairs with this order, with businesses and people and what you're doing. Stay home. If you do not have to leave home, stay home. Essential services, essential things that you need for your family. We need to do that. We need to work on standing up our health system. Our first responders are out there every day. We don't have enough equipment. We're spending our day trying to make sure that our hospital staff, our first responders, that includes our sheriff's department and what they're doing every day. Don't, don't take us, take our eye off of the ball because of your foolishness. So, I just want to remind everybody, where was your mind a week ago? Where is it today? And where do you think it's going to be a week from today? When, you, when you're thinking about this virus and your family and your loved ones, look at Italy. Where were they a week ago? Where were they yesterday? Six, no, 800 deaths. We are surpassing Italy's numbers 13 days in. Look at it, study it. Take this serious. We want you guys, we want to be a team in this region. 
you look at where all these numbers are, it's in our region. So if we're going to be a team, you know, we need to remember that God comes first. Our teammates come second. That includes your community. And you come last. Not third or fourth. Last. Thank you and God bless. And right now we will have the parish president from uh, Plaquemines Parish, Kirk Lapine. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, President Shang, for having this today. And uh, Mayor Cantrell, thank you for everything you're doing. You know, it's, I know you've been very busy and it's been very tough, but thank you. And to all my surrounding presidents, thank you guys for all being here. Um, you know, President Shang talked about parishes and how we're diverse in many ways. And Plaquemines Parish was 65 miles long, east and west bank. So we have some geographical challenges. And with that being said, we tried to push out as much information as we can, the right information, the positive information. And that's some of the issues that I'm sure a lot of these presidents have is getting the accurate information put out. So I wanna tell my Plaquemines residents that anything that comes from, that is accurate, will come from the Plaquemines Parish government or our EOC department. Uh, we struggle with a lot of uh, hearsay. We struggle with a lot of I heard or I saw, and that doesn't help the public. And you're going you're gonna to see that, and, and that's a, uh, a message that we talked about before this meeting. We have to put out the right information, okay? Um, and um, I want to say Plaquemines Parish has adopted the S program. And when I say by S, we call it the four S's. Stay calm, stay informed, shop local, and stay home. And that's really important today as we got the governor's order. So if I can tell you anything, guys, stay home and stay informed. Next will be uh, St. Bernard Parish President Matthew Jewell. Hi, I'm St. Charles Parish President Matthew Jewell. I want to echo what a lot of the folks are saying up here and, and thank them for getting this set up. We are really here today as a united front to tell everybody to take the governor's executive order seriously. If you can, you need to stay home. Go out, get some groceries, and go back home. You can go out and you can get provisions, but other than that, you need to stay home. Now, speaking of groceries, these grocery stores are going to remain open. These are essential businesses. There's no need to go out and hoard groceries. Please take what you need and leave some for everybody else so that everybody has access to resources. I remain in constant communication with our industry leaders to make sure that the critical industry in St. Charles Parish will continue to operate. Beginning tomorrow, St. Charles Parish Courthouse and our parish buildings will be closed to the public. If you need to enter the courthouse, it will be by appointment only. We have also take, taken steps to ensure that all critical services will remain intact and we will be staggering our workforce to limit exposure to our workers. Again, I just want to urge citizens to, to stay home if at all possible. Um, if you need information, please reach out to the St. Charles Parish Facebook page, Channel 6 on Cox, Channel 99 on Uverse on our, on our parish channel, uh, as well as our website. We're utilizing all forms of communication to get official certified information to the public. Um, again, this is a stay-at-home order. This isn't martial law. This is a stay-at-home order from the governor, and we are asking all of our residents in St. Charles Parish to heed that warning and take it seriously. Thank you. Next, we will have St. John Parish President Jacqueline Hotard. Thank you and good evening. I'm Jacqueline Hotard on behalf of St. John the Baptist Parish. I want to thank you, President Shang, for having us here in Jefferson and also to Mayor Cantrell. Um, what the situation that you're faced with right now is one that no one could be prepared for and um, everyone here is handling it uh, remarkably. So I want to thank you both and to all of my other fellow parish presidents just to let you know that we're working together. We have each other's backs and we have our residents backs and that's why we're here standing together as a united front. I wanna remind the residents of St. John Parish, while our offices are closed, 
we are still open to, the, to serve the residents of St. John. If you need any information from our offices, please continue to call 985-652-9569. Or for any other questions, you can also email us at info at stjohn-la.gov. And as everyone said, essential businesses will remain open. Stores, banks, pharmacies, you will still be able to do those types of businesses. It's all of the other non-essential business uh, operations that are going to be closed at this time. <clears throat> And lastly, we want to continue to pray for and support our healthcare professionals and our emergency responders, because right now they're the ones that are having to sometimes walk into harm's way to protect us all. And it's important that we continue to pray for and support them and support our leaders. Again, thank you all for having me. I encourage everyone, as everyone has said, to stay home, stay safe, and stay um, in contact with good information. Thank you. And next, we will have Tangipahoa Parish President Robbie Miller. Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. As Jacqueline said, I'm Robbie Miller, Tangipahoa Parish President. I want, being last, pretty much everything's been said, but I will say that our region, and I thank the leadership of this region, as you can see, we represent a large portion of our state, but we also represent the best state in the, in the country and we represent a large, the best region of that state right here. And we do that because we come together. As you can see, we pull together every time. We, although different, we pull together through our 2016 floods, our freezes, our snowstorms. We've always been there for each other. But we've been there for our citizens first and foremost. And we, and we make sure that we each other take care of, our, of all, our, all of our citizens. And right now, the governor and all of us are asking you, real simple, and the governor said it, stay home to stop the spread. Stay home, stop the spread. It's that simple. We ask you to pay attention. They've said it, I'm saying it. Only get your information from official sites, sources, CDC, LDH, and your local parish. That's the place to get your information. That's the place to make sure that you are informed. We are doing everything we possibly can to make sure that you as our citizens stay safe, that you know what's going on, and that you help us and help everyone stop the spread so that our, our medical staff only has to take care of the ones who absolutely need it. We don't need any of us running around doing something silly and causing emergencies that are unnecessary to take it away. Look, your medical staff, all of us across the region, is working exceptionally hard. They're doing a phenomenal job. We need to pat them on the back for the job they're doing because they risk their, they risk their lives to help us, and we thank them dearly. Remember, we are the best state in the country, and we're going to come out of this even better. Thank you very much. Appreciate you. Good job. We're, we're fortunate to have Dr. Um, Cantor here with us from the state, so I would like to invite Dr. Cantor up if you want to uh, give an update. Thank you, Madam President and Madam Mayor. Um, you know, I think uh, folks at home can be assured that the leaders behind and next to me here um, have uh, not only been leading in on this pandemic, uh, they've been acting and uh, issuing orders and education that is based in science and with the backing of the public health system, really based on the best information and recommendations that are out there. It gives me a lot of confidence that the leaders up here have been doing what leaders should be doing. This is still a very new virus. And there are a lot of things that we don't know about it. For example, we don't know what the mortality rate will be. We don't know what the hospitalization rate will be. We can make guesses. We don't know the degree of asymptomatic infection that's out there. And we still don't know some of the mechanics of how this virus is spread from person to person. You can call those known unknowns. What we do know is that the single best way to decrease the spread of this virus is for people to stay at home. The more people stay at home, the less this virus will spread. It's that simple. And I'll repeat it. Stay at home. Stop the spread. We believe that the next week will be a crucial week in our outbreak. We're able to affect the trajectory really with this week and what we're trying to do 
is avoid a flood of our hospitals. We're trying to preserve life-saving acute care, ICU care for the patients that will need it. And in order to do that, we have to limit the spread of transmission, particularly in this next week and the few weeks to follow. That's why staying at home is going to be so very important. We just concluded a weekend of drive-by testing sites across the two parishes here. Uh, those went very well. It was a collaboration between local, state, and federal officials. A lot of work went into it, and it was a great result. There's still a lot of people that have symptoms, maybe mild symptoms, and they have not been tested. In outbreaks like this, it, it will be impossible to diagnose 100% of the cases out there. There will be people that have COVID that will not get a certain diagnosis. I'm gonna tell you what those people should do. If you have symptoms and you're concerned that you might have COVID and a test is not immediately available for you, please stay at home until three days after your symptoms resolve. That is the recommendation that we would give even if you had a confirmed case, is to stay at home until three days after your symptoms resolve. The governor has ordered us to immediately begin expanding the capacity of the healthcare system across the state, and particularly here in the greater New Orleans region. That's gonna be inside the walls of hospitals with more beds, more patients being cared for, and also in non-traditional healthcare settings. This will likely be the greatest single expansion of healthcare capacity the state has ever seen, and it's gonna happen over the course of 10 days. The goal here is to increase the capacity of acute life-saving care. Once again, the single greatest thing you can do to help mitigate this pandemic is to stay at home, like every person beside me here has asked you to. I will add one other thing, and I'm glad that Madam Mayor mentioned this as well. Um, brothers and sisters you might have who uh, work in the healthcare industry, who work in hospitals, who work in clinics, they're working awfully hard right now. They're working very long hours, and they're, they're oftentimes being asked to do that without maybe all the protective equipment that they need. They're putting themselves on the front lines for everyone else. So I'd ask you, if you know anyone that works in the healthcare industry, it's a good time now to reach out to them, give them a call, give them a text, just let them know that you're thinking of them and, and you thank them for what they're doing. Thanks. Madam President. Sure. from one of our reporters, Danny Monteverde. He wanted to ask you, he said this morning on Face the Nation, Scott Gottlieb, the FDA commissioner from 2017 until last year, said he thinks New Orleans is at quote, extreme risk from the coronavirus. His exact quote is, I think there's other cities that are extreme risk. New Orleans is at very high risk and they're not taking appropriate measures. And his question is, if what's being done in New Orleans is not appropriate action, what is? Well, I think I would ask him that since he has so much information. But in regards to the city of New Orleans and understanding how uh, we move through as it relates to our culture is one of the reasons why I had to uh, end private events and gatherings uh, before the state of Louisiana did. So that's speaking to one, uh, our city, uh, how we uh, interact in our city. Uh, and the needs for the city of New Orleans to be leaders, even in the state, saying that we need to stay home. And so other than that, um, I think that we're following the proper protocols and procedures that are coming from experts. And, um, and if I, you know, I, I think about it, I often do, even as it relates to, to, you know, to Mardi Gras. You know, was that something that we should have had or not? But of course, you know, hindsight, right? but then also understanding even when I mandated that public events stop, which included St. Patrick's Day, and the, the reaction that that yielded just across uh, the city, uh, even across parishes. But the reality is, is what it is, and the existing conditions are what we're trying to fight against. And that means stay at home. Uh, hindsight is 2020. 
Uh, but we're taking uh, the steps that leaders have demonstrated here this, this afternoon and uh, are going to continue to ask our residents, to ask the public, to follow our mandates and the steps that are coming from government every step of the way. And that means stay at home in order to flatten the curve. Right now, we don't know where our curve is, which speaks to what Dr. Cantor uh, alluded to. Within the next week, it's going to be very, very meaningful in terms of the tests because they've been ramped up and the results that we stand to get and therefore the positives that we stand to gain. And what we know and what we expect over the next week going into the following week, this is a very critical moment in not only the city of New Orleans, but through the region. And leadership is collaborating, leadership is supporting one another, and leadership is galvanized in a way that we haven't seen as it relates to this virus. Thank you. Question with regards to ages 18 to 35, not seeing the number of positives that. I think you will. I mean, we're beginning to see that. Um, the numbers in the age bracket just higher than that. The 40 and 50 year olds have gone up over the past week, and um, you know we think that that'll happen. One of the reasons why that probably is, is you know up until really a few days ago, testing was limited to the people who were the most symptomatic, which we know are people who are most likely to be older. Um, so I think there was some selection bias in that when you're um, in the age bracket that you mentioned, you're more likely to have really mild infections that probably just didn't meet the bar to be tested earlier because the testing capacity was, was so limited. Um, so I think you will see increases in that younger age bracket as the um, availability of tests go up. Uh, you know, but whether or not you're seeing that age bracket get real sick, have complications, we think there's certainly vectors certainly out there spreading the disease and that's you know that's really why this stay at home message is so important because we're realizing as we're in this that the prevalence of uh, asymptomatic or even extremely mild symptomatic infections is probably a lot higher than we thought before and so folks might not realize that they're getting sick go out there and spread the virus unknowingly um, so it's really for that reason that the stay-at-home message is the single greatest tool that we have right now to tamper down the spread. Foxy. Um, I have two questions for Dr. Cantor. Um, <laughs> sorry, I'm just trying to get this. Say, for instance, you don't have a temperature, but maybe you have a cough or shortness of breath. How do you know when you should get tested? It's a, it's a great question. Um, and the criteria to test, you know, so far has been related to the availability of tests and, and we know that the availability has been limited but we do know that people have symptoms that range from very 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 sick to not very sick and, and to even maybe asymptomatic um, so those individuals while the testing supply is still being expanded might not get tested they might not be able to get tested for a couple more days the advice to them is the same advice we would give as if they were tested and it came back positive. And that advice is, if you're not sick enough to be in the hospital, and again, 80 to 85% of people won't be. If you're not sick enough to be in the hospital, you need to be at home, you need to be isolating yourself from others, and you have to stay that way until your symptoms completely resolve, and then three days afterwards. Absolutely, and that's understandable. I think the testing capacity will, will also go up, but I don't want people to be distracted by that because the test itself actually isn't the end all be all. It's the actions that are taken, and those actions can be taken whether or not the test happens or not. And those actions are, if you are sick, stay at home, isolate yourself from your family as much as possible, not always possible, but as much as possible, and stay that way until three days after your symptoms resolve. That stands for whether you tested positive or whether you didn't even have a test at all. Jambalaya News, followed by The Advocate. Yes, it is a 
is going to be for Mayor Control and President Parrish and Cynthia Lee. We have received so many messages on our Facebook page and on our cell phones for our construction industry community who is considered essential. Now, if I heard you right, you asked who is considered essential. Yes. Okay, and this is spelled out very clearly in the guidelines that were issued uh, by the city of New Orleans on Friday. So essential speaks to, one, whether it's your healthcare professionals, uh, businesses that are, uh, that are essential in terms of your, your banks, your grocery stores, uh, the restaurants that will do takeout, delivery, or pickup only, essential. Uh, also, as it relates uh, to your, uh, I call it, you know, I don't want to give a plug Home Depot, but it's like your, uh, well, it's like your Home Depots. Your, you know, <laughs> got a free little plug, which is good. They're operating, right? They're operating in Orleans Parish also. But it's those essential uh, es establishments or businesses that we, the public will need to depend on to to live and also to operate you know in our city so for, as of right now all construction work is stopped unless it's by the city all construction work in orleans parish is not stopped okay. as it relates to work being done by the city of new orleans so for example, our infrastructure work, our joint infrastructure work with Sewage and Water Board and DPW, which also speaks to green infrastructure, those projects are not stopped. We need them to move forward. What we understand in this environment, it seems to align itself very well with the social distancing practices that are already in place. Also the equipment that the uh, contractors would wear when doing the work. And so this particular environment doesn't call for, as far as Orleans Parish, to stop this type of infrastructure work. We know that hurricane season, June, and that's for all of us. But as it relates uh, to Orleans and with the amount of infrastructure work that we've had to put on the street for 2020, we need that work to move forward because a lot of it is also tied to federal dollars that are on deadline. And I don't want to get into a situation to where these dollars go away, but the need for infrastructure continues to remain the same. So we're in this, this, this predicament simply because resources were not spent or projects were not delivered in a timely manner through the years. Uh, but under my administration, we move this work and it will continue to move forward because it does speak to the immediate needs and conditions of infrastructure in the city of New Orleans. Madam President. Jefferson Parish is gonna follow the guidelines that the governor just um, issued. And I know it's several pages and I was able to look at it a little bit, but I know there are several different categories. So, you know, if there's questions related to that, and I'm sure our council members are gonna start fielding those questions and we need some, some more clarity and a little bit more definition per industry, we'll be happy to um, get those questions answered for you. Um, also, I just wanted to uh, remind everyone um, before the next question, this site is a testing site. I want to, um, Mayor Cantrell and the City of New Orleans and Jefferson Parish, we're just so grateful to be one of um, the pilot programs. It's the first time it's ever been done, and um, I'm very proud of the efforts. We have the Louisiana National Guard who is actually housed here, and these, these uh, men and women are sleeping in cots in this very building. Um, and I know the mayor has two sites. And uh, Mayor, I know you're proud of your people because we stood up those sites. Um, we're, we're not normally in the healthcare business. We stood up those sites and at every site on every day we reach capacity. And of those of you who have covered it, you see how well it was run. So we feel that that is our contribution certainly to reach capacity every day. So if you have symptoms, um, the two sites in New Orleans, it's Armstrong Park and well, Mahalia Jackson. Mahalia Jackson, the mayor is saying. Mahalia Jackson and the Lakefront Arena, and this here at Alario Center. And um, tomorrow it g begins again. Your sites are open at eight, correct? Yes, ma'am. Yes. We eight a.m. Sites up in three days. It was an incredible endeavor by many, many different agencies: federal, state, local. Obviously, the Louisiana National Guard had to get trained. Uh, so we're all very proud of what we were able to do. And I'm, I'm scared they're going to take our people away and 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 bring them to other cities to show how to set up a site because they did it so well. So. Uh, so I just wanted to remind everyone that begins here, as well as the two New Orleans sites tomorrow at 8 a.m. for any Louisiana resident with symptoms. Next question, the advocate. Um, there was a report that 
FEMA put out this morning saying that Louisiana is one of the top states with suspected or confirmed coronavirus cases within nursing homes. Um, is that a concern among leaders of cities and parishes? Is there anything extra that can be done for nursing homes and to protect the elderly? Well, I mean, clearly uh, our focus has been on our most vulnerable, and that also speaks to our nursing homes, but also independent living facilities that oftentimes get left out even when talking about it. Uh, guidelines have been disseminated for our assisted living, as well as, of course, our nursing homes. We had one uh, nursing home that, uh, well, we've, that was just inundated, and you know, you know what that one is, Lambeth. Uh, we have no um, other um, areas, even assisted living uh, facilities, that have uh, been consistent what we've seen with Lambeth. So we believe that we have been able to isolate that and continuing uh, to do everything possible to focus on Lambeth, but also as it relates to guidelines for other uh, assisted living facilities and nursing homes to follow. We touch them daily. Um, and we are seeing, because we have to be the eyes on that, to make sure that they're following proper protocols and procedures, because we do not want what we saw after Katrina to happen as it relates to our most vulnerable people. Absolutely. So just to um, make sure that I understand this correctly, so you haven't seen a cluster of cases in Correct. Atlanta, but have you seen other cases in living facilities throughout New Orleans? Not like we saw with Lambeth, so no. A lamp that seems to be in isolation, meaning that that one large cluster in a nursing home that we've had to address and also slow that down in terms of the spread. And so we believe that we've done that, but at the same time, we understand that our that our citizens who were at Lambeth, uh, they make up a large percentage of the people that we've lost um, to this virus. And we, you know, I, I want to just extend my condolences to all of our people, but to our families um, that have had to uh, deal with the loss of their loved ones. And they were a daughter and son of the city of New Orleans, and they matter. WDSU. How close are you to a full city statewide response to Well, a lockdown would require um, additional resources that we at the local level and even at the state level do not have. But these mandates would need to also come uh, from the federal government that would activate and unlock resources that we're asking for right now. So the best thing, and we don't, you listen, our people don't need, you know, in my opinion, for us to say lockdown, stay at home. It's, it's the same, stay at home home and this is what we've been communicating this is what we expect our people to not only listen but to adhere uh, to the mandates that we're given and do not take them lightly so a lockdown would mean the same stay at home and even staying at home or with a lockdown there will still need we will still need access to essential services like our grocery stores and our pharmacies and so I know that we are at the best place that we need to be right now. And in order for us to uh, see the results that we're looking, and it will be the public showing us that they are staying at home. Thank you, Mayor. And, and let me just say this, and I said a little bit early, we wouldn't be here today if we listened a week ago. We weren't in a stay home situation until today. So if we listen and we do what we're supposed to do and we act like a team and be unselfish, we won't get to a lockdown. Telemundo. Any other questions? Anyone else? What is the plan for the homeless people? Good question. And thank you for, for asking that because it's something that uh, me and my team have been working on um, just daily, but even today, um, working to take further steps. 
what we know and what we have seen as it relates to our street homeless, that's the focus right now. Our, our homeless individuals that are in our shelters really doing the assessments that are necessary to move them into, into housing. So there are partners associated with that. But my focus primarily has been on street homeless with the shutdown, meaning in regards to the stay at home orders and even those that came prior to that with limiting uh, operations of businesses, uh, particularly restaurants, for example, uh, minimal operations, or even those that have closed down, including bars closed down. What we have seen at these practices, it's driving our rodents crazy. And what rodents do, they will find food, they will find water. That puts our street homeless in dire, dire straits. And then that's why I'm just laser focused on it right now. Moving our people off the street, we have about 90 on the street. I'm asking and I'll be locating, um, relocating about 120. I'm, I'm, you know, you have to break it down in, into size. So although our numbers are showing 90, I'm planning for 120. I need them off the street. And so we're working on where they will go but also making sure that they're provided resources and services that they will need. But as I look at how the rodents are being driven crazy, how they will then go to these encampments, I do not in any way want Titus. We don't have it in Orleans and we do not want it. So it means being more proactive in this regard. We're in the height of mosquito season, right? So that's another issue. We know that we have had um, cases of West Nile in, in neighboring parishes. We do not want that as it relates to our street homeless. It makes them even more vulnerable. So with this population, we're moving. Um, I've given my, my directives. I want, I want my people off the street. And, um, and we're working towards that and hopefully be able to show you results tied to that by tomorrow as well as Tuesday. But the logistics have to be worked out first. So then when we move, then we not only move, but it's, it's the way that we expect things to go um, will be seamless. And that's, that's a part of this. We have to stay calm, stay focused on the mission, execute, and also see that we've done the right thing. As we follow guidelines that are not uh, throughout, not only the state of Louisiana, but as we look at our partners throughout the United States, that parks are still open now. We do things a little bit differently in terms of how we gather. It's open for walking, making sure social distancing practices are absolutely in place, but they are not open for basketball games. This is what we've seen in several of our parks in Orleans. So with that, I'm going to have to take the goals down. That was the directive that was given today. Of course, that will take some time, a couple of days, but in the, in the meantime, we're going out, we're talking to our residents, letting them know this is not social distancing. I don't know how you can guard a man and with social distancing and then get, it doesn't work. So we're having to remove the, goal, the goals that is our strategy right now as it relates to um, the gatherings in parks that have been an issue for us. Uh, the fly along the riverfront, we had to speak again to this. We have closed this off, um, but open to if you're just walking, you know, basic, you know, walking and, and enjoying the, you know, outside and environment. It's good for your health. It's good for your sanity. So we do not want to go into a situation to where this will no longer be available. But that's why if people follow again our instructions, that they can utilize, but they do when the stay at home mandate. But we also understand that as they walk their dogs, they need to be able to do that. And so we're keeping um, the aggressive cleaning going, uh, even as it relates to you know, the, the, the playgrounds and the like, which again, they're outside of people's homes, some of them are. But we, as we've watched and, and, and really throughout the city day and night, we see that the public, they really are complying. And so we commend them for that. 
Even as they walk their dog or even play on equipment, it's not in large groups. They're practicing social distancing, and that's what we're encouraging, and we're mandating that behavior. Any other Sure. The question was, um, any more information about even younger individuals, kids, toddlers, and, and so forth? You know, um, the um, severity of the illness seems to go up as age goes up, and, uh, and, and young kids seem to, clinically at least, be doing fine. Um, they don't seem to be getting that sick, and that's, that's one of these unknowns, you know. Um, but that doesn't mean that they're not infected. It doesn't mean that they're not transmitting the virus to other people. It doesn't mean that they're not a risk of being a vector themselves, even if they're not showing symptoms. So that's the reason behind the closure of K through 12 schools. Um, that's the reason behind um, the heightened emphasis on daycares, whether they choose to close or whether they choose to stay open with very aggressive um, health measures in place. But for folks that have young kids, just because your kid isn't sick, they could easily um, have a very, very mild form and, and be transmitting it to other kids, transmitting it to grandma and grandpa. Um, so the stay at home order and the, the recommendation to not mingle with other people holds just as much for young kids as it does for anybody else in the family. Well, thank you all very much. Thank you all uh, so much and uh, we'll keep you posted as we make progress. Thank you all. Thank you.